And she sat in my realtor's car and says to her, you know, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian by faith. And she said, wow. I had a dream about this house. And she said, wow. I don't feel fully like I have fulfilled the ministry I feel will come out of this house. But she, oh. she shared with my realtor and she said, I, I had a dream. And basically in the dream, she saw the word freedom over the top wow. of the house. And oh. my realtor is listening with one ear. <laughs> Oh my word. And then she's oh. hearing, you know, she said, I was hearing you t share your dream with me in the other yeah. ear. And I knew that the Lord was in this, that there was oh. something going on br brewing in the kingdom. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Welcome, friends. Miss Shaley Mitchell is a portrait artist, lover of people, and a storyteller. Her amazing work stands alone and is known by its immersion in heart and soul. In an unforeseen step of faith, fueled by her deep love for Christ, a heart for restoration, and an eye for creativity, Ms. Shaley purchased an 1886 farmhouse in May of 2018. During this time, she began to document the rest restorative process, noticing how closely it paralleled her story of restoration. Residing in the Dallas Metroplex, Ms. Shaley clings to her Southern roots and her love for the simplicities in life. And without further ado, I want to welcome you, my dear friend, Ms. Shaley Mitchell. <laughs> thank you for being with us oh, on the show today. <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm so honored and always love chatting with you. So this is yes. fun. <laughs> yes, this is very fun to just, we're going to have a, a great time. And I want people to get to know you, the woman that's behind the lens. And, uh, you know, some of the journey that you've experienced. Um, share with us, though, let's start out with a little backstory on your life and, and, and lead us to the dream that God gave you about, I think you were said that you were in Texas Hill Country when you had a dream about an old house. Was beautiful Texas Hill Country. So backstory on me, Brenda, is um, I'm from Arkansas, you know, born and raised, as you know, I'm living in the Dallas now, but was raised in a great minister's home. Um, so I was raised in Arkansas up until the age of 18. Um, I have a little bit of a unique ministry story just because my dad was not a pastor. He was an evangelist. So my mom was a stay at home mom. Uh, dad traveled the world evangelizing uh, most of my upbringing and still today. Um, so I always say, you know, ministry can be tough. It doesn't exempt you. And so I lived an interesting life, um, of ministry, but we also carried, I had some trauma in my childhood, um, mm -hmm. that I, I share often about. And so, uh, my parents went through a pretty tough divorce, uh, when I was around the age of 13 and I, um, kind of in a nutshell, that's when I, I talk about how, you know, deep trauma entered my life at that, that point in my life. And I suffered through some uh, abuse some sexual abuse through my when I was 12 13 14 so um, that's a long story in itself it is very very loaded but carried a lot of trauma um, into my adulthood that was unhealed and undealt with um, that I hadn't allowed the Lord to really really come in to and heal so when I was 18 I moved out to the Dallas area and chose to go to Bible college um, had a deep deep love for the Lord and felt called to full-time like vocational ministry of some sort. I knew I just felt that draw. So moved out here at 18 and um, that's when I began, I shared, you know, that I began, the Lord really, really dealt with me, especially after Bible school that I had some wounds in my heart, even being in ministry and serving him and serving people that I just had not allowed him to go into what I call every single room of my house and wow. search out and heal. Um, and even being in, you know, a Bible college graduate working on my master's, yeah. still carrying these, uh, carrying these wounds that were limiting me. Mm. Oh, that's powerful. And I can relate because I too, uh, you know, suffered from uh, childhood sexual trauma. And I think that, you know, people who have been there uh, when you're a child, you don't know how to process those traumas or any verbal abuse or any kind of um, emotional abuse, because and oftentimes we will, um, according to psychological studies, that child will also bond with their abusers, especially if they're in a position of being a, a protector or a, a provider. You know, children need love and they need guidance, and and at that age, it really becomes so confusing to their identity. 
um, on such a deep level, and it can actually split us. And and we learn uh, we're learning something that's a lie, and that is that love will do those things. And so, you know, I think that it's very important and that you've brought this up that it wasn't until later in life when really you were old enough that God could kind of put his finger on the wounds and say, okay, honey, we're going to walk through some stuff. And he's gentle about that, but he, but he brings us to these, um, these, how do I, you know, the word confrontation sounds so harsh, but they really are confrontations so that we can acknowledge our pain that lies beneath the surface. I mean, would you say that until we've done that, we can't just throw scriptures at it. We can't just start declaring things. Can you talk about the process and how God helps us to dig? Absolutely. Yeah. So I I share this um, when I passed Bible school, I I wasn't living, um, you know, I was going to church services and serving in ministry, but I talk about, you know, John 10, 10, um, you know, Jesus says this, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. And I wasn't living that John 10, 10 abundant life. I was a believer going to heaven, but right. very, very limited in my thinking. Um, I was dealing with cycles of anxiety and deep depression, yeah. um, just living a very, very limited life in relationships and carrying that trauma into like I said, my, my current situations. Um, and I call it putting band-aids over bullet holes. I was, I was putting wow. theological band-aids over, you know, that you know, scriptures and things like that, but they weren't, I wasn't really allowing the Lord to really, really come into those deep parts of my heart and to heal me. So I began um, to see a, a spirit filled counselor um, in my mid twenties and my first session with her, I just felt like the floodgates opened. Yeah, And she looked at me and she said, you're going to know the truth and the truth is really going to set you free. And mm. she said, I feel like the Holy Spirit is about to begin heart surgery on you, Ms. Shaley, and he wants to use you mightily, but this has to be healed and he's going to heal it. And yeah. she kind of went over with me what the spirit was telling her, but that it was going to be a process, but mm. there was a purposeful process mm. that was going to take place in my life. And she had no timeline for me, of course, and yeah. the Lord didn't reveal this big Right. Um, in, in date, but um, but I knew that I had begun a really beautiful deep process at that mm. point, and we began, you know, soul work. I had I had learned, I think, with um, some of the traumas, specific traumas I had been through, um, and being a believer, I had I had learned um, not with ill motive, but you just kind of learn to hide because vul- vulnerability is dangerous sometimes, yeah. especially at that. At that point in my life um, in the church, I think the church is getting so much better at this. But, um, you know, vulnerability Mm. had had been dangerous growing up. So that counseling session really unlocked a deep part of my heart that needed to be Mm. unlocked. And shame started to lose its hold um, on my life during that time. And it has been a process, but that's kind of the, the key. I feel like that whole step into counseling and some of the things the Lord was doing in my heart at that specific time. He was weaving yeah. a lot of situations and relationships together to begin to mm-hmm. unlock that shame and unlock that hatred, self-hatred mm-hmm. and anxiety and those things that I dealt with from all the things I had brought into my you know, tr- adulthood. Wow. And you were talking about how vulnerability at that stage in your life was so dangerous. And, you know, I think when we're coming out of those dynamics and having to deal with those dynamics of being betrayed on such a deep level by people who should have protected us, um, vulnerability is a very hard thing to embrace and finding someone that you can trust. That's why it's so important to seek out a really good counselor that has knowledge of both trauma and uh, understanding the, 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 the ministry of the Holy Spirit um, and the Word of God, because, you know, there is truth in the Word of God that will set us free, but it, it goes so much deeper than just quoting Bible verses. You know, it, it's a process. And um, so let's skip ahead a little bit. You had a dream about a house that you had no idea would be um connected and perhaps God was leading you in that dream to a, another step in the process of healing. Can you tell us about that dream? He absolutely was. Yeah. So in December of 2017, as you mentioned earlier, I'm a photographer full-time. That's what I do by trade. So I had gone out yeah. to beautiful hill country 
uh, for a big shoot and I had gotten there the night before and um, was really tired. So chose to go to sleep early. There was, I tell people that we were in a cabin, there was no Wi-Fi or anything like that. So went to sleep and in the middle of the night I had a, um, what I know now is, was a prophetic dream. Um, I was set back. And as I said, the Lord was doing some deep healing my, in my life at this time. Um, but I had this dream and in the dream I was set back to my hometown. So the house, um, that I'm going to refer to kind of physically symbolized a lot of this trauma that I talk about that I went through the deepest traumas, traumas of my life took place in this home, but I was standing at a four way stop in the dream. And all of a sudden I realized I had walked and I was standing face facing this house. So facing my pain, just kind of head on. And I looked and my wow. toes hit the sidewalk all the way to the back fence. I opened my eyes and the house had been bulldozed down from where I stood all the way to the back fence. There was not a, there was not a splinter. There was not a brick left. It had all been, go- it was gone and, you know, closed my eyes and opened them again in the dream. And there was a new house coming up on the lot mm. and um, it was being built. There were three men working on the house. There was a man hanging windows. There was a man on the roof covering and there was a man nailing down a wooden beam on the very front of the house and it was so sweet during the dream this man specifically on the you know nailing down the wooden beam kind of stopped what he was doing and he looked right at me right in the eyes in the dream and he smiled and I it kind of caught me by surprise and I smiled back and I, I waved and he waved back at me and then just kept working and um, I tell people the Holy Spirit, I do believe this speaks the love languages of our hearts. He knows us better yeah. than we know ourselves. And everything about this home was all things, Miss Shaley. It was all things mm-hmm. that I love from the colors to the windows, how they stood and the natural light, the wooden beams in the front. And so I sat there and stared at this house coming up that was just beautiful. And I opened my eyes in real life and the Lord spoke to my spirit in the middle of the night. And he said, I'm about to make all things new. Wow. And so I wrote down it's so moving and so powerful and that there, it really hasn't happened. I've had a couple of dreams in my life like that, but nothing, nothing like this. Yeah. I wrote it down and wrote down the word restoration. <clears throat> and at that time I thought full on that he was just, that the Lord was speaking to me about me. So me yeah. as a house and him yes. rebuilding and restoring me and how he was making all things new. So I called a mentor that day. I called a friend. I told, shared, I was, you know, for the whole week, I shared this dream with people. I had this dream and I've got to explain to you what the house looked like. So that was a common conversation in my, in my week that week, uh-huh. everyone heard about it. And the crazy part of the story is fast forwarding to May of 2018. At that time, I wasn't even house hunting December, 2017. Fast forward to May, 2018. I decided to purchase my first home. And a realtor friend of mine, um, you know, was helping me. And very early on in the house hunting journey, she calls me. I'm working in Nashville. And she says, Miss Shaley, don't hang up. But I'm on site at a home. And it's different than what you thought. But I think this is your house. And she she (laughs) FaceTimes me and shows me this house in ashes, basically. Um, This 1886 Mm. farmhouse fixer upper. But the frame of it was identical to the house that I had seen in my dream from the porch that sits to the left, to the windows, to the, and this is unlike my personality, but I bought the house sight unseen. I felt so strongly that it was mine. So purchased the home and that's where the story of the house began. (laughs) Oh, I love it. I love it so much. And you know, God's also used dreams in my life in a powerful way. So I, I re, we relate to one another so much on the uh, artistic and creative side, <laughs> and I just adore you. But I, I think it's interesting that in your dream, you um, first approached a four-way stop. And to me, and, and then you saw the house in front of you. And I, I think that that really speaks to those um, intervals in our life, those places that, you know, we are finally ready to come to terms with something. It's a place of a crossroads. It's a place of decision. And we have the power to either acknowledge it or to turn and walk away, to go a different direction. And so, you know, God gives us a choice. 
And what I love about your heart, Ms. Shaley, is that you didn't uh, choose to be bitter through life. You chose to follow your love for God. And in doing that, when we trust him, even when we carry pain, even when we've been wounded and we've been betrayed, there is a journey that God will faithfully lead us to that place where we can finally acknowledge we can find he equips us and and he gives us the grace to do it and he carries us through it so you uh i think i remember you telling me something about a great granddaughter of the original owner of this um farmhouse did she also have a dream so the um so it would have been so being 1886 there's so many different people wonderful people i've met um, but yes, Miss Cindy Carter is her name and she's wonderful, but, um, her, she had a dream. Uh, it was so funny. She shared it with my realtor, you know, during the buying process, the, the buyer and the seller don't have direct contact. That, right. that was what was interesting in that process. Yeah. She didn't, we didn't know she was belie- a believer. We didn't know anything about her at the time. And she sat in my realtor's car and says to her, you know, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian by faith. And she said, wow. I had a dream about this house. And she said, I don't feel fully like I have fulfilled the ministry I feel will come out of this house. But she, oh. she shared with my realtor and she said, I, I had a dream. And basically in the dream, she saw the word freedom over the top of wow. the house. And oh. my realtor is listening with one ear. Oh, my word. And then she's oh. hearing, you know, she said, I, I was hearing you t- share your dream with me in the other yeah. ear. And I knew that the Lord was in this, that there was something oh. going on br- brewing in the kingdom um, for yes. ministry. And, um, and none of us at that time had any idea of how things would begin to unfold. But uh, the Lord had wow. given her a prophetic dream and me a prophetic dream in two different states, two different ages, two different. And uh, so it's just been that was that was so powerful and confirming yeah. for me, you know. Yes. Isn't that yeah. amazing? And gives me absolute chill bumps when you when you said yeah. the word freedom that she saw yeah. in the house, because that freedom was yours but also that extends to the kingdom purpose and the greater picture of the freedom that will flow, the message of freedom and hope that will flow to others as you you have shared this experience through your amazing talents and gifts. So you've taken this story really, um, and it's expanded. Uh, Is it is it becoming a book? Um, can you tell us a little bit about the process and how God's used this uh, yeah. and, and what's happening? Yeah, so I um, I mean, I, I, I'm teary now even thinking about it, hearing you talk yeah. about it. It's just yeah. the Lord's done so much in me in this. Um, but yeah, so I naturally as a photographer, um, my, my buddy Amy Stock still said this to me and I had not thought about it, but she said, Miss Shaley, it really is like an Esther for such a time as this thing, yeah. having specifically you in that home with your specific journey and your specific story with the gift of photography, with the gift of storytelling and the gift of seeing uh, beyond, you know, ashes, it's seeing beautiful. Yeah. So I always tell people I have a thing for, for befores and afters because photography homes and people <laughs> I love. Right. And afters, but, um, but yeah, I've just been in the process of, as I said, when I bought it, it was complete ashes. You know, a lot of people passed this house and never gave it the time of day. It was actually going to possibly be torn down, but mm. I saw so much potential in it. I thought, oh, it could be, it's a treasure. It's a diamond in the wow. rough. So I purchased it and, um, you know, I always parallel that too. I always say we're redeemed to be restored. Yeah. And, um, you know, he purchased us, purchased us to restore us. And so I started, I began the process, um, and it's been a process of room by room, piece by piece, going in and gutting each room little by little and restoring it, you know, gutting it, taking it back to the studs and a blank canvas and then filling it, you know, making it new and restoring it. So in that process, I'll be share it, you know, on all my social media platforms, just because I love sharing, you know, what I'm doing. And, um, it's so resonated with people the restoration message and healing. I began to get messages from people all over the world. And, um, you know, Michelle, my heart has so, I've needed restoration in this area of my life for so long. I've got this undealt with wound. I've, I've got, you know, messages from ministers. I've been in ministry for 25 years, Michelle, and I have never, ever dealt with this. And this has kind of spurred me on and opened my eyes. Um, you know, I began seeing a counselor. I began really allowing the Lord to work in this area of my life. 
And so um, the home parallel of just room by room, piece by piece has been a process. And that, as I've shared that, that's resonated with people from around the world. And so I am writing wow. a book right now and I'm sharing about the process of what God's done and, and praying it brings freedom and restoration to people wow. all over. Yes, and I know it will. Uh, I know it already has. And uh, as you've so beautifully described, people are much like houses. And, you know, this body that we're in is much like our house that holds our spirit and our soul. And, um, you know, it, it, it embodies uh, the emotions that we carry and, you know, the things that, that we process, that we live with, that we bury. Um, but we live in a culture where we make all these comparisons and we're watching somebody else's progress and we're watching the glossed over version of someone through the lens of a camera, through uh, maybe even, you know, uh, well, through social media or television. Um, it's as if we're expecting that we can fix ourselves like, you know, a, a half an hour TV show of Fixer Upper. And right. while that's <laughs> wonderful to see the overview and the hope of, you know, redemption from uh, A to Z, so to speak, the finished process uh, in, a, in, in a quick, short story, that's really not the reality. And so it's messy. And you've uh, you experienced something where uh, it, it involved um, a wallpaper, that was exposed and, and just kind of in the trenches of the mess and wondering if certain things could be saved. And I want you to speak to that issue of comparisons and perhaps the, um, the places in ourselves that we tend to reject, we tend to not like, we don't want to go there. We don't want to visit that, that shame or that, that place of memory. Um, because we've worked so hard for so long, usually at projecting a different image. We've worked very hard. Usually most people do this. I did it, um, at trying to be lovable by a different standard. And, and God tends to take us back to where he's peeling back the layers and exposing the real thing. And he's saying, I want you to acknowledge and love this person, this girl that you have long walked away for, from. So can you kind of take that and um, talk about that day when the wallpaper was exposed and what transpired for you? <laughs> Uh, and I'm hearing that, Brenda, I always tell people the quickest way to abort my destiny in this little farmhouse is to look at other homes on Instagram oh, and all the yeah. bigger, <laughs> shinier, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm here restoring, you know, it's always on the toughest stage. I'm restoring this 1886 yeah. farmhouse covered in sweat, oh. you know, but just staying focused on what the Lord's doing here in me. But yeah, with the wallpaper, uh, we were about a week into, uh, well, I guess after I purchased the home and I just told everyone, I told the contractors at the very beginning, I said, if you, because I've lived in the home since I bought it, I've, I've yeah, restored it wow. and lived in it at the same time. So, um, which has been a journey in itself. <laughs> but yeah. I told the contractors, I said, um, you know, if you can just gut it back to the studs and, and pull everything back and give me a blank slate, I can start, let's start there. So about a week after we had, they'd been doing that. And about a week after I purchased the home, one of the contractors, I'd come in one day and I heard him say, you know, Miss Shaley, can you come back here really quick? I need to show you something and ask you something. And so I went back to the bathroom, this little bathroom I have set back here. And he said, um, and it was like his voice just drowned it out as I walked in and I, I saw what I was surrounded with. But I looked up and I could hear him saying, we've pulled everything back to the studs. And I just need to know what you want to do now with this. And I looked and it was the same wallpaper that was so the, the home current home had the same wallpaper as the home that I had had the dream about. And I was sitting there surrounded by this wallpaper that really kind of, you know, pulled out some memories of trauma and things like that as I stood there. And I tell people the Lord spoke to me and he said, I see you. I saw you then I stand outside of Tom and I see you now. And, you know, I tell people there I stood with almost like a hammer in my own hand and his voice saying, we're writing a different story, a whole new yeah. story. So there I stood with a choice. Like you said earlier, Brenda, you know, we do have a choice in our healing. And I told the contractor, I said, just pull it back to the studs. And I said, let's cover it with sheetrock and 
let's paint it. And so we painted it that day with a color called alabaster um, from Sher's color of the year, Sharon Williams. And I think it means all things. Play. So um, we painted the, painted the walls that day with a fresh white coat of paint. And, um, and, you know, and there's just, there's just so many ways that the Lord's confirmed to me that this is the place for me. It's not the place yeah. for everyone. Right. For me. That's and, good. Um, he's done a deep, deep healing work, uh, mm -hmm. in my life here mm -hmm. and, um, through, through several situations, just like that, he's, he's proven yeah. to me over and over that I'm standing exactly where I should be. And the wow. work that he's done in my life and my heart in this home is something mm -hmm. I'll take. It's part of the journey. It's something I'll take with me, um, wherever yeah. I go. So, mm. Wow. Well, you know, people are really hurting right now. And, and I really like to bring, uh, come to a place in, in our program where my guests can speak encouragements to people who are dealing with fear and anxiety in the, the given, you know, world conditions and where we are. What would you like to say to the person who has not acknowledged the the, the traumas or the, the pain that they've carried and perhaps they've even tried to forget, they live in denial and they're coping with it, but um, they're arrested by the, um, the, the current world conditions and in the last two years of a pandemic and all the things that have put the pressures on everyone and this kind of shaking that we're experiencing. What would your encouragements be to that person who's really exasperated and exhausted and they're feeling hopeless and they just don't know where to turn with, they don't know how to deal anymore with what's coming out. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to just kind of take away the message of shame and just tell this person that we're all on a process. It's, it's a process for all of us. Uh, no matter how shiny things look or how great things look, every human being yeah. um, is, is, you know, walking with the Lord is we're being sanctified, transformed to glory, strength to strength. It is a process. And I share with people that I actually have, I'm not done with the house, you know, I'm working on it. And I have one room right now that I'm about to begin um, work on. And it sits at the core of the house. It's really interesting. It sits at the center of the house. And um, in the restoration process, it's interesting that it's the last one left because you can't go through any, you can't go to from one end of the house to the other without going through this room. Mm. And I feel like that's the place Brenda in my life um the Lord had healed done some healing work deep healing work but there was some really core places in my life that I had not allowed the Lord into and um had kind of avoided and I feel like the Lord recently you know told me we're gonna have to go through this and not around mm. it but I'm with you and I'll wow. carry you through mm. um to the other side and um and so I just want to encourage you know the person listening um whatever you're your wound is whatever your, you know, if it's shame, anxiety, depression, whatever that, whatever that is. Um, I just pray that you allow the Lord, you know, his access to every single room of your heart. Don't leave one room left locked, open up. Don't spend one more day hiding or, um, living in the pain that you're living in. Um, and just, like I said, just the biggest thing is it, is it that it is a process. I think a lot of times, even in the church, charismatic movement that I was raised in that I adore. Um, a lot of people, I tell people they miss their miracle because it's, they're looking for a moment. And mm -hmm. a lot of times God uses a process Good. and, um, you know, like in Mark eight, when he healed the blind man, he chose this very, very odd, what we think is odd process. He could have just spoke the word and healed him, but he, he used a yeah. process. Yes. And so, um, be encouraged. You're loved. And, um, you know, just that they seek healing and walk it out with the Lord. Amen. You know what? Perfect word, perfect encouragement for right now. And Ms. Shaley, I wish we had all day to do this. Um, I'm going to have to have you back. <laughs> and we I so love look it. forward to your book. I can't wait to uh, be able to share that with everyone. And um, uh, tell us how I know that you're speaking. Uh, listen, you've been, people are calling you and you're just going out there and getting after it. And I love what God is doing in your life. Tell us about how people can find you. You're speaking, you're sharing uh, so beautifully as only you can do. Um, how do we get a hold of you and where can we find even your beautiful photography work? 
Thank you. Um, so with the name is Shaylee, it's just first name only. So on all, yeah. <laughs> on all uh, website and social media platforms, they can find me at just MissShaylee.co is the website. So M-E-S-H-A-L-I.co. And then on uh, Instagram, all social media platforms, it's just at MissShaylee. Yes. Well, people need to connect with you and find you because everything that you do is, is done with grace and beauty and, uh, anointed. I mean, I sat here getting chills as you, as you talked several times and even teared up. I love you, my friend. And I thank you you. for being here today. Uh, such a treasure you are. And I'm excited to have you back again. So uh, we'll do this again. Okay. (laughs) I love you too. Love you, Brenda. Thank you. And my friends, we love you and we consider you to be a treasure. And if you are feeling that your life is dilapidated, it's too far gone, it's a pile of ashes and rubble, I I want you to know, and Ms. Shaley wants you to know, that Jesus is the master builder and he comes to make all things new again, but he will walk you through the process and it's worth every single step. Thank you for joining us. I want to encourage you to come again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch.